everybody! Welcome to our 1.2 notes, which is the introduction to integers. So the first thing with an introduction to integers is to talk about what is an integer. So an integer is a number that has no fractional part. Uh, it also means that there's nothing after the decimal place if you write it as a decimal. Okay? So let's write that out. It's a number with no fractional part. And there's nothing after the decimal when you write it as a decimal number. Okay. So what are some examples of integers? Well, probably the ones you're going to think about are like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and you can just keep going. Uh, but also the number 0 is, is an integer. And also the negative numbers, like negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, and you can keep going in both directions. Uh, those are integers, okay? And things that wouldn't be integers would be something that has a fractional part, maybe like a half, or maybe 3 and a fourth. Those kind of things are not integers. Uh, something that has, some, has anything after the decimal, so maybe like 1.6, that's not an integer, okay? Uh, anything that's irrational, so you might think about pi, uh, it's about 3.14, but it keeps on going. Uh, it's actually an irrational number. Um, that would be not an integer. Uh, maybe a square root, not a perfect square, maybe like the square root of 7 would be not an integer, okay? If you had like the square root of 16, which would be 4, that is an integer, by the way. Okay, so what an integer is and what it looks like. Uh, next up is talking about positives and negatives and a word problem. So in a word problem, what are some keywords that would tell you that it's going to be a positive integer? And this is not an all-inclusive list. This is just a short list to get you thinking and get you started, okay? Uh, but if in a word problem they say that something is above or maybe it's above ground, uh, that would be a positive amount. Versus if it was below ground, that would be negative. Okay. Uh, if you, if something is gained, that would be a positive. So if it's lost, that would be negative. Uh, if you earn money, that would be a positive amount. Uh, if you owe somebody money, that would be a negative amount. If, um, please assume that it's a positive number. And if you see the word negative, it is a negative number. Uh, also, just if you see the word, like, have, some, some of the very basic ones. I have three apples. Well, that would be a positive three apples, not a negative, okay? Um, kind of in the owed category, if you ever, uh, like, have overdrawn, like, if you have a bank account where you overdrew an amount, um, that would be negative. So that those are just some ideas to get you started. Um, because what you're going to have in uh, my lab the first little bit is going to look like this. It's going to say, what integer represents each situation? And they're going to give you a short little sentence, uh, kind of like a word problem. And you just need to know, is it positive or negative? Okay. So my first example, you owe Christina $27. So the number in the situation is 27. Then you need to decide if it's positive or negative. And I see the keyword O, which means that it would be a negative 27. And so when you get to a problem like that, all you have to do is type in negative 27, press enter, and my lab's going to tell you, great job, fantastic work, and something very positive and uplifting and be awesome. Okay? Uh, let's look at another one. B. Building is being constructed 293 feet above this level. So 293 is the number in, the, in our sentence here. And my keyword is above. So above means it's going to be positive. You don't need to put like a plus sign or anything. You just type in 293 and have a great day. Okay, and that's it. Uh, the next thing in this section is graphing on a number line. So I have a number line here. A number line should always have negatives on the left side, positives on the right side, and it should always go by the same amount of increments each time. So I'm going by ones. Uh, it should keep going by ones. It shouldn't skip around at all. Okay. 
So let's go ahead and graph some numbers on the number line. My first number is negative 5. So if I see the 0 here, negative 5 should be to the left. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 spaces. To graph on a number line, uh, you have a dot that's filled in that's on the number line. Not above, not a below, not below, but it should be on the number line. My next number is negative 1, so again, it should be on the left side of 0, just one place. Next up is 0, which is right in the middle of my number line. Then I have 3, which is on the right side, 1, 2, 3 spaces. And this one is 7, so from 0, I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 to the right. And that's what it looks like. In your uh, homework exercises, uh, you're actually not going to graph it yourself. You're going to choose from a multiple... Uh, multiple choice questions, and they're going to have the graphs look all kinds of different ways. Sometimes they're going to have them flipped around, sometimes they're going to be missing some of the numbers, um, and it's almost like an eye test, so be really careful to find the right here on these, okay? Alright, so the next thing that we're going to look at is less than and greater than, and especially in comparison to the number line, okay? So less than means that it's less than another number, but how can you tell? Um, so one way, kind of relating back to the number layer, is that less means that the first is to the left of another number on the number line. Okay? So then greater than, you might be able to guess, that means that the first number is to the, you want to guess, to the right of another number on the number line. Okay, so let's practice this a little bit. Okay. Our next example on example three is that we're going to grab each integer on our number line, and then we're going to insert either a less than or a greater than between the pair to make a true statement. So in example A, my numbers are 0 and negative 4. So I'm going to plot 0 and negative 4 on my number line. So the first number, 0, I notice that's to the right of negative 4. So that means that 0 is greater than negative 4. Let's do another one. In B, and you'll notice they're the exact same integers. I've got negative 4 and 0. So my graph is going to look the same. So I'm going to have negative 4 and 0. But this time, negative 4 is listed first. Negative 4 is to the left of 0. So that means that negative 4 is less than 0. Last one I have is 7 and negative 3. So I'm going to plot positive 7 and negative 3 on my number line. 7 is to the right of negative 3, so 7 is greater than negative 3. If for those of you who are not very visual, and this is uh, the less than and greater than, you're having a little bit of a tough time. Um, another way you can think about it is with money. Uh, so would you rather have $7 or would you rather owe somebody $3? I'd rather have $7 than owe somebody $3, so that's the larger number. And the larger side is always the open side, it's like a bigger, it's bigger on that side, it's bigger on the side of the bigger number, and it's smaller on the side of the smaller number for the symbol. Okay, hopefully that helps. Uh, last thing we're going to do in this section is absolute value. And absolute value is technically the distance from zero on a number line. So you notice that we're relating everything back to the number line, okay? And so you're just thinking, how far away is it from that zero mark? So I have a lot of eights here just to make things interesting. So I've got the absolute value of eight. So how far is eight away from zero on a number line? And if it helps at all, we could draw one of those. So here's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 it is over here. How far away is it? It's 8 away. So the absolute value of 8 would be 8. How about the absolute value of negative 8? So if you were thinking about the number line, 
here's 0, and negative 8 would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 to the left of 0, but it's still 8 away. Even though it's the other direction, it's still 8 away. So the absolute value of 8 is 8, and the absolute value of negative 8 is also 8. What if I have a negative on the outside? Well, we do what's inside first, so I know that the absolute value of negative 8 is 8. So now what I have is the opposite of, neg of 8. So I have the opposite of 8, which would be negative 8 for that one. Last one is the absolute value of 0. And the absolute value of 0, well, it's exactly on 0, isn't it? So it's distance it all away from itself. The absolute value of 0 is 0. So what you'll notice about absolute values is that the absolute value of anything always gives you a positive value. But it's a little bit important, the order that you do things. Uh, so if there's a negative on the outside, you have to do the absolute values first and then apply that negative. So the absolute values come first, and then anything on the outs comes next. Okay. Hopefully this helps you guys uh, with this section. If you have any questions, of course, always reach out to me. Hope you guys have a wonderful day.